Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I have an amazing video for you guys today. Here is an article from Politico.com. You guys are gonna absolutely love. Now check out this headline. Young people are pissed off. Housing crush sours millennial voters. A surging cost of housing has hit them harder than anyone else. I totally agree. Guys, remember, you know, if you are new to the housing market, you know how difficult it is to save 20% in the current housing market where houses are like at least like $500,000 in some desirable areas. Saving, you know, $100,000 to $120,000 is so hard, especially if you're renting, especially with soaring rent prices, right? And you know what? It is just in general, it is hard to save that type of money. So yeah, millennials are pissed off. Remember, if for older people, sometimes, you know, you might have some inheritance, maybe you might have a house already, so you all you have to do is kind of sell your house to upgrade a little bit, and then you have a lot of that down payment from your original house. But remember, young people, they don't have that, right? Their parents are still, you know, living in their 60s, maybe in their 70s, they're still alive, so they don't have that, that, um, that money coming from them, uh, inheritance money, and they don't ha have a property of their own where they could sell it and then use that money for a down payment for the second house. So they don't have that. They literally just have to save $120,000, a hundred to $120,000, which is incredibly difficult, right? It's incredibly, incredibly difficult because things are expensive. So here, let's read a little bit. President Joe Biden's job approval rating has have sunk across the board, but no group has abandoned him more strikingly than the young adults who have helped propel him into the White House. While these voters are frustrated by Washington's slow action on climate change and student debt, I, there's another often overlooked reason why they're growing pessimism. The surging cost of housing has hit them harder than anyone else. The, uh, the combination of record high home prices and escalating mortgage costs, rates have nearly doubled in the last seven months, threatens to price uh, to price a generation of would-be buyers out of the market, create cratering home sales, fueling the problem of rapidly rising rents and further limiting young adults' ability to save for a down payment for their first home. Basically, everything that I just said, this guy just said it in this one paragraph. It is not looking good, but I don't necessarily think it's government's problem. What I think the problem is, is that prices have just ballooned too much and it's too difficult, right? Here's a uh, quote, young people are pissed off. Um, skyrocketing rents and housing prices are especially hard on young people who have already buried, uh, buried, uh, who are already buried under student debt. So again, exactly. Look, key voting motivator for young voters uh, we're talking to. So here's the deal. We told young people, you gotta go to school, you gotta go to school, you gotta go to school. And schools were listening and schools started raising their their prices. And the government kind of was in it, in on it too, man. They were giving out, you know, student loans to all these people. And suddenly, you know, they kept giving more to the students and then the universities kept raising their price. As a result, there's students out there, man. Could you imagine graduating with a bachelor's degree, you know, owing a hundred thousand dollars. It's, it's crazy, right? How are you supposed to save a hundred thousand dollars to buy a house when you owe a school a hundred thousand dollars for an education and that job that you got as a result of that bachelor is probably paying you $65,000 a year with with the cost of inf with inflation and rent and everything is virtually impossible so yeah I would be pissed off too because it is a problem you remember in this country the American dream is owning a house you know being able to buy a house it, you know, creates wealth. It creates generational wealth. You could pass it down to your family. It is a big, big deal, guys. I encourage everyone that's listening to this video to buy a house, but right now is not the time. Right now, it's too expensive. I'm gonna go over that. Um, just let me just read this one quote. A supply side uh, intervention, even if we were to be successful, does not does nothing to elevate the pain right now and does nothing to elevate the pain of the American people before November. So look, the pain is basically this, okay? This is the median sale price uh, across the United States, okay? In 2019, the median sale price was $278,000. And now, it's 385,000. At the peak, it was 
three, almost 400,000. So guys, that is almost a over a 25, like that's like a 30, 35% increase. So what is the problem, right? The problem is that the communities, right, cannot afford to live in their neighborhood anymore. The jobs in the, in the community are not paying enough for someone to save enough money for a down payment to get into a house. Now you see this curve right here, okay? This is basically the peak. And I believe it is downhill from here. It is definitely going to be downhill from here. I expect this black line to hit this blue line in the next year, you know, to two years as the recession kind of takes hold and we kind of start seeing cracks in the economy and we start seeing supply kind of start going up and then we start seeing the you know less uh, buyers which you know less buyers and more demand is going to cause the prices to come down rapidly so if you're a seller man i gotta tell you put your house on the market that's my opinion because you're never gonna get these prices uh, for a long time. It might be five, six years before it comes back to this. And if you're a buyer, I would say just hold on, hold on, because in the next six months, we're definitely going to see better prices than what, we see, what we're seeing today. And if you're renting, the best thing you could do, my best advice for you is make sure you have a W-2 job, make sure you have at least two years of working with that job, because that's gonna allow you to basically get the best rates from the mortgage companies. And that's what you need, right? A W-2 job and two years of pay stubs. So with the same job, okay? And you know, that's, that's, uh, that's your homework. So save as much down and, and you really wanna put at least 20% down on your first home. That will avoid you having to pay PMI insurance. So literally, I hate to throw this number out there, but if you are looking to buy a house for the first time and you do live in a high, you know, generally desirable area, you're probably gonna need to save between 80 to $120,000 cash. That's what that's gonna be what you need to put down on your first house. I know it sounds like a lot, but you can do it as long as you stay disciplined and you save every single penny. Now, uh, let me just jump in to the Redfin housing downturn risk score area uh, map. Basically, if you live in any of these red dots, you're going to see a big price decrease in the next six months, I believe. Maybe, you know, obviously these are prices that are coming down right now. And if you live in any of these blue dots, you're probably gonna see stabilized uh, prices. So red, basically you're gonna have great deals very soon. Blue, it's not gonna change as much. Now guys, I wanna just say thank you for all the support I've been getting. I've been getting so many views on my videos. Thank you guys so much for leaving comments and liking my videos. I appreciate it so much. And by the way, if you guys do like these videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and go ahead and like and leave a comment. Again, thanks so much. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next video.